the last two videos that we've done, they've sort of introduced this idea that in the BMS industry, we've probably been lacking a bit in innovation the past 20 years. You know, we've, we've probably had good innovation and, and good improvements in our products, you know, our controllers, you know, software, database, graphics, alarms, trends. You know, we've probably had good progress in the product that we install. But I think if we're all honest with each other, we've been pretty lazy around innovating around the design, engineering, and installation of building management systems in new construction projects and definitely have been very lazy at evolving in how we maintain building management systems. So in today's video, I wanted to sort of come down from the clouds, those last two videos, they're a bit out there, and I wanted to talk to you about something that is, is one of the most simple and basic things that we do, which I think that probably worldwide is wrong on every single air handling unit. So if you have VAV boxes that are modulating open and closed, and you have a variable volume air handling unit, I bet you that no matter where you live, we are incorrectly measuring or determining the dirty filter status. The panel filter and the bag filter, the differential pressure. Like surely measuring the pressure across a filter and determining that it's dirty, blocked, and then creating an alarm, that's gotta be one of the most simple, basic things that we do. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you that I think it's wrong and doesn't work on every AHU in every building around the world. Now, the reason why I'm gonna go through this is definitely, I'm not trying to make BMS companies look bad here. What I am trying to do is shock you, shock you, into stopping and thinking that, you know what? We have to reevaluate everything that we do. This is another one of those situations where we developed a solution to something, you know, 30 to 50 years ago, which was appropriate. And then something changed in the industry and our solution from those days is not appropriate nowadays. This happens a lot. A lot of our problems are because we still use a control strategy that was developed 20, 30 years ago and now no, no longer applies. So in this situation, what happened was a long time ago before variable speed drives were affordable, a lot of air handling units were constant volume. So the AHU just ran all day at design volume, 5,000 liters per second or 10,000 liters per second. So in those days, when there's a constant volume of air flowing through the air filters, the panel filter and the bag filter, having a fixed pressure switch like this was appropriate. We could take this pressure switch and we could set the set point to be say 150 pascals so we could put our screwdriver in here and we could turn this dial and we could set the switch the pressure switch to 150 pascals this is only appropriate for a constant volume system this is not appropriate for a variable volume system because here in melbourne where i live the climate is quite mild here it's not very hot so through summer, the three months of summer, maybe like just making it up, but maybe say five to 10 days of summer, are we in a full design condition? For five to 10 days of the year, all our VAVs are at VMAX, our air units are design volume, all our chiller valves are open, our chiller pumps are at design speed, all the chillers are running. That doesn't happen very often. It happens for, you know, less than 10 days a year, I'm making that up. That might not be a fact, but it's not a lot, which means that only on those days is that 150 Pascal set point gonna be appropriate, only on those days. The rest of the year, it's not appropriate because the, the VAV AHU is not a design volume, it's somewhere else, 
and there's less volume coming through the panel filter and the bag filter. So we're not actually measuring the pressure and checking it against the correct set point. It's not appropriate. So I think in Australia about 10 years ago, I, I think the mechanical consultants started to work this out because our specifications here in Australia require a pressure transmitter and not a pressure switch. So most of our premium grade and A grade buildings, the panel filter and the bag filter, we have pressure transmitters, analog inputs into our controllers, not pressure switches with digital inputs, we measure the pressure. That's quite standard here on our premium grade buildings, A grade buildings. So on the graphic, on the schematic of the air handling it, you see the two filters there and you can see the pressure. It's 100 pascals or it's 105 pascals. And the BMS company then sets an alarm that if that pressure increases to above, say 150 pascals, we generate a dirty filter alarm. That is completely pointless because we've just taken, the problem with this was that we had a fixed set point that wasn't a relative or appropriate to other fan speeds. We put a $100 more expensive pressure transmitter in there and we still just did what we did 50 years ago and put a fixed set point on the graphic of 150 pascals, which we may as well just stuck with that. Now, there are other reasons why a pressure transmitter is more appropriate than a pressure switch for filter monitoring. I'm not going to go into that because I'm on a different path here. But luckily for us, the solution to fix this can be done in software. And I'll show you that now in a sec. So what I'm trying to show you here is we know that a fixed dirty filter pressure set point 150 pascals doesn't apply unless the fans at full speed at design volume. So changing the pressure switch to a pressure transmitter provides no value if we're still going to have a fixed pressure set point of 150 pascals on the analog input as we're measuring the pressure. So all we need to do in our software is to create this little lookup table which says that when the AHU supply fan is running at 100% speed or design volume, then the dirty filter pressure set point is 150 pascals. And then as the supply fan is slowing down, we reduce the calculated dirty filter pressure set point. So in theory, in this example, and I'm sure these numbers are not correct, but if our AHU is running at 50% speed, then we calculate that our filters will be dirty if the differential pressure across them is greater than 75 pascals. This is a very easy thing to do. So during the construction phase, you develop the software program, you download it, there you go. The service technicians, they could tweak these points in a real life situation. And we're not going to go into how you do that. But, you know, in construction, we don't have any extra time. We don't actually have time. So just get a working thing in there to start off with. And then the service technicians have something available to them. They could change this slightly. So maybe in a real life situation, I'm completely making this up. But maybe in a, in, a, in a real life situation, it might be something else. We don't know that. Well, I don't know that. I only worked this out in consulting land. I never knew about this when I was a contractor. So I never tested this myself, but it makes sense. 
our lifecycle control specification asks for this, but you know it doesn't get implemented. So can you see how here a very simple bit of software completely changes how we determine if the filter is dirty or not depending on the fan speed. This is not a hard thing to do. So if you have VAV boxes and VAV AHUs with pressure switches, that doesn't work. If you have VAV boxes with VAV AHUs and you have pressure transmitters, but you have a fixed alarm of say 150 pascals, that's not gonna work. So how do we fix this? The solution is very simple and very easy, doesn't cost much money. The first thing is, if you live in a country where you're still installing pressure switches, the solution starts with the mechanical consultant. So mechanical consultants, all you have to do is go into your base specification, the template, go down to your points list, and where it says DI, digital input, change that to an AI, analog input, and in the description where it says differential pressure switch, change that to differential pressure transmitter. That's all you have to do. Like that's 15 minutes and you've changed your base specification, all your jobs from then on have the right instrumentation. Because we cannot expect the BMS company to do the right thing and lose the job. So company A allows for more expensive pressure transmitters, company B allows for pressure switches, their cost is less, they win the job. So this solution has to start with the consultants in the countries where you're still specifying right now differential pressure switches. In Australia, on our premium grade, A grade buildings in our big cities, we already have pressure transmitters. So in this situation, as the BMS engineer, all you need to do is write a little bit of software. And in most cases, the lookup table is a pre-built block they just drag onto the software programming page. So for in Australia, just do a bit of software. That's all you have to do and we fix that problem. We need to reevaluate everything that we do.